Uh, hi, and welcome to the August uh, edition, the first one of August of According to Pete, where this time Pete is going to wreck a guitar. I have a guitar, which is a Jackson RR3 Randy Rhodes model, which is terrible to play. I said I was going to build a pickup system based on the ADMP 401 analog devices MEMS microphone, and I've done this. Um, <laughs> And I'm going to tell you about the system and how this all came out. So there, let's talk about it. So let's talk about this part. Now, when I when I brought this up a couple weeks ago or whatever it was, um, immediately everybody gets on and goes, oh, oh, oh man, you're going to end up with feedback and stuff. You're dead right. I did end up with a lot of feedback at the end of this. Before these things were available, I swear to God, I saw a promo video on the Analog Devices website that showed like a couple of scientist dudes pinning one of these things on top of a speaker and, and picking up the vibration from the speaker. And they were able to, you know, recycle that and use that. I'm like, oh, vibration, that's awesome. Of course, you read the data sheet and you use one of these things. Yeah, it's just a microphone. It's an open air microphone. It does pick up vibration very well, picks up everything else very well um so in the end this was not a good choice but i went for it anyway because like eh, i'm not afraid to fail i do it every day w with the idea of designing a circuit to do this uh what, what do you need okay well i need the admp 401 right um it has uh, pff, a voltage requirement of like 3.3 volts max, I think. There's no regulator on the board, but there is a little op amp for gain. It's got like a gain of 67, like I wrote it down somewhere here. Oh, and then just in case you want, let me B, uh, B, O, B for breakout board. Um, do, 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 09868, 09868. Just so everybody knows, this is the part that I'm talking about. So this thing um, has a requirement of like 3.3 volts and its output, right, has a DC offset. Um, it is not AC coupled off of the breakout board. So I'm, I know I'm gonna have to AC couple it with a cap. Um, and its output level I tested it on my scope uh, about a week and a half ago, and I think it was like uh, somewhere between one and two volts peak to peak. So is that close to the level I need? Eh, it's workable. I can make this work. I'm going to use three, three of them. So I want to mix this thing. I want to mix them all together equally. So um, what you get is an op amp. You got a feedback resistor. I put a 10K in here and I'll explain some reasoning behind that maybe if you're lucky. And then to mix a bunch of signals, you have, for example, another one here, another a resistor there. So if I'm, if I'm mixing three equally and I want to gain a one out of this thing, check this out, 10K, 10K, 10K. Any signal in here, uh, as opposed to this one, as opposed to this one, these all get mixed. They do not get added, they get mixed, okay? So your output level, if I've got one volt peak to peak here, one volt peak to peak here, and one volt peak to peak here, and they are all in phase, I do not get three volts peak to peak out here, or six, or whatever. Um, I get the mixing of those signals, so the amplitude's going to be consistent, okay? As I said, I've got uh, like one to two volts peak to peak coming out of the ADMP 401. Uh, the first thing I want to do is to be able to turn it up, turn it down, so I don't have to worry about the level so much. So I put a 10K pot right at the output, okay? Now, this does have a DC offset. It's not, it's not at zero volts, and I have no interest in running a bipolar supply, so a DC offset is assumed to be part of the nature of the beast. Um, so we have to couple that to the next stage. If it's not completely obvious, and I haven't stated it previously, you do not want to DC couple this to this because all of your DC levels will propagate through the DC coupling and you'll end up with something really stupid on the output. So we AC couple this thing. I chose 10 Ks for my values just because I got a lot of them on hand. This is a gain of one here. This is our op amp. Uh, I chose an LM358 and I'll talk about that in a sec, but first let me talk about this coupling capacitor. This guy, right, the gain on the op amp, we've talked about this before. 
uh, gain is set up by this resistor and this resistor, and it'll be uh, you know the feedback resistor over the the <laughs> what's the term for this resistor? The the eddy resistor. I don't know. Um, so 10 over 10 it give, gives you a gain of one. Okay, the capacitor. Right, and we've, I think we've talked about this previously. At lower frequencies, it represents a high resistance. At higher frequencies, everything passes through, okay? And in fact, if I've never written this calculation down, uh, one over two pi F C equals X sub C. This is called capacitive reactance, okay? And it's in ohms. So 2 pi times the frequency of interest times the capacitance value inverted gives you a number. This number is larger at low frequencies. So you want, so you pick a low frequency, like uh, the lowest frequency of interest, say, you know, 100 hertz or what have you. And you put in, you know, 100 hertz times whatever, in this case, one microfarad, da 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 da, and you come up with a number. That number has to be, uh, effectively, you want it to be an order of magnitude lower in resistance than this one, okay? Now, I just picked one microfarad and uh, do, 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 and uh, so yeah, you can, at one microfarad and 10K, you basically put um, 10K in here, you put one microfarad in here, and you can back it out for frequency. So with these two values, in this equation, you end up with a cutoff frequency of 15.9 hertz. Okay, so this, this ends up being a high pass filter, which effectively passes everything above about 16 hertz. I'm never gonna worry about 16 hertz. That thing is way lower than it needs to be. It's fine. Now in truth, the, the preceding resistor here is actually this and this at the frequency of interest and some of this, but this doesn't really come into play because it's gonna be a smaller value. This is gonna be like, you're not gonna turn it down to zero generally. Uh, adding that 10K into the thing, eh, it doesn't matter. So anyway, um, one microfarad and uh, yeah, the other frequency or the other uh, equation of interest is one over two pi times RC equals F not. So that's the, that's the equation that you're actually working with here to get, you know, the 10K, da 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 As I said, the ADMP uh, 401 runs off about, you know, nominally 3.3 volts. So I'm going to want a supply for that. Now, I'm not really going to want, and, and once this is AC coupled, I can do whatever I want out here. I've just got a signal. Nah, nah, nah. But I'm not really going to want to run an op amp at a different supply voltage because that's a pain. If I've already got to set up a regulator for 3.3 volts, I'm going to want something here that runs off of 3.3 volts too. Turns out the LM358 that we sell, the dip, it'll run at 3.3 volts. That's easy enough. Ah, you got to set up your reference, okay? In order to have the output sitting halfway between ground and VCC, which is what we want to get the best up and down swing, we set it up like this on the non-inverting input. So I've got a 10K and a 10K, which splits the difference, right? Voltage divider. So this is going to be 1.5, 1 1.65, is that right? Um, and then you want to decouple that with a, a, another capacitor. Um, and it's, it's essentially the same thing. You want to keep noise off of this pin so it doesn't propagate out to the output. Use the same equation here to figure out what your cutoff is, and it's the <laughs> same values, same thing. So at anything um, l at higher than 16 hertz, it's effectively going to go to ground. So noise shouldn't be a problem there. In my first iteration of this, I was lazy, and I did not put the feedback cap in. Um, dumb. Always put that thing in, because it will oscillate. You will hear radio noise and go, huh, I wonder what that's all about. That is your op amp freaking out at high frequencies, um, probably soon to burn up. You want to pick a value, um, same, same equation, 1 over 2 pi RC, you put those values in at 1 nanofarad and 10K, uh, what was that, 16 kilohertz? I think I can say that. So yeah, so anything higher than about 16 kilohertz is going to get fed straight back 
it is not going to oscillate above that frequency. Everything should be golden. Ha ha ha. It's 3.3 volts. Um, you, of course, decouple the supply at, at the op amp with a 0.1 microfarad. Keeps the noise off of it. Um, and again, you're going to have a DC offset here. So before you feed it into anything that's looking for an AC signal, you need a coupling cap, okay? One microfarad, I don't know what the input impedance out here is going to be. It's going to be something higher than zero. This should be just fine. And we have our other inputs from our other ADMPs. They each have a pot, which I have not drawn here. Uh, for a regulator, I just used, um, I didn't get a skew for this, sorry. Uh, it's one that we sell off the storefront. It is a fixed 3.3 volt regulator in a TO220 package. I did not get this off the storefront. I had it in a drawer. So don't come back to me and say, oh, that's overkill. I know it's overkill. It's a TO220 package. I had it in a drawer, right? All of this junk, all of this junk, I put together out of drawers. I didn't go shopping. Well, okay, I went shopping. I didn't have a bunch of those lying around. I went and got those. So I've got, uh, so you got a decoupling cap into your regulator, which outputs 3.3. This is a terrible drawing. And another, let's see, that was a 0.1 microfarad. This was a 10 microfarad. And at the input, V in is actually a one cell lithium polymer. Uh, it's one of the cheap ones that we have. This isn't gonna draw a whole lot of current, I don't expect, so I just put a LiPo on it, a single cell. Now the LiPo, when it's fully charged, is gonna be at about 4.2 volts, but they call them 3.7. This being such a large package, uh, I don't expect the um, dropout voltage to be very good. Uh, dropout voltage, if we have not spoken about it before, is the voltage that will, uh, that the regulator requires, okay? Um, if I got 3.3 volts here and I've got 3.4 volts here, this thing isn't gonna regulate properly. The output isn't going to be 3.3. It's gonna be like two point something probably. I haven't checked it. I've got the battery fully charged and I believe I'm running very close to 3.3 here. So eh, expect about a 0.9 volt. I'd check the data sheet if I really cared, but this will run at a lower voltage. This will run at a slightly lower voltage, so I'm not too worried about it. Here, here is the wretched beast as she stands, uh, as she sails. She doesn't sail, it's a guitar. Um, now, very important piece that uh, you may be looking at and wondering about uh, is this transformer. How steampunk is this, right? This, this guitar, in my opinion, is so badly balanced that it is completely unpleasant to play because you're supporting so much weight with your left hand. Eh, I could rant about this, but that's not really why we're here. Um, this is my circuit and uh, do, do, do. as you can see, I've got wire strung. I've got a sensor up here on the corner. Uh, I got another one down here at another sharp edge and then I got one in good old center stage in the middle where the regular pickups go. I got my three, I've actually got a fourth pot. The LM358 has two op amps in it, right? It's got two stages virtually. <laughs> actually, not virtually, actually. Um, and what I had intended to do, given more time, was to run the signal, which you probably can't see on the board now, uh, back through with a master volume on the second op amp. Um, never got to do that, so this doesn't do anything really. Uh, but the first three do. Um, and apparently I wasn't smart enough to drill holes in the PCB and run them up that way so they're stable. So they're just on their leads. I'll show you that it lights up. So let's talk about the sound. The sound sucks. The first thing I ran into was the absence of this feedback cap. I was listening to it through a headphone amp, which is a good thing because you don't get feedback you know, through your speaker, da 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 um, You know, I got the headphones here and I can listen to it. Um, what did it sound like? It sounded sort of like, and, and I don't, some of you guys are gonna get this, some of you aren't. Sounded sort of like a Gretchy TV Jones sort of thing, kind of a breathy pickup, um, minus a lot of low end, okay? So it, it was a, kind of a cool sound, but it was noisy and it was gritty. I attached these by two methods. I mean, obviously you can see the, the masking tape uh, that, that secures them, but that's not really enough mechanical connection. So what I did was I got some scotch double-sided sticky tape 
uh, not foamy, not foamy tape, because I want a lot of vibration to get to the microphone. Um, so it's like a thin piece of cellophane tape with sticky on both sides, like that, like that, and then uh, the masking tape over the top. The masking tape was hopefully to keep some of the ambient sound out of it. Didn't work at all. Uh, let's see, I told you I was running it through a headphone amp and it was getting, I, w I was sort of successful there, but I was running into um, the, the, uh, the, the, the breakouts will rail easily, um, which is to say they clip. Uh, as soon as you hit something hard, it, it, it clips badly. You can, I watched it on, a, on an oscilloscope and it clips pretty badly. For the sake of this morning's video, I wanted to uh, plug it into my combo. And I did that before uh, Greg, our wonderful videographer who I, whom I love very much. Don't cut this out, man. Um, before he showed up, I plugged it into my combo in the basement uh, just to see how bad the feedback would be. It was horrendous. Anytime it is on, in the on position, it's got this <laughs> that is incessant and, and uh, yeah, you can barely hear anything else until you do and then you're, you're rock. Um, but as soon as you stop, or even before the, st the string stopped vibrating about halfway or so, it's back to feedback. So I'm not even going to do that. You're not going to hear it. I'm sorry. It was terrible. It needs revamping from the word go. This, while amusing, could use uh, less amplitude uh, between the mechanical junction so that it does not rail the output of the breakout. Uh, you could also like adjust the gain on that op amp on that board, so you'd have to like pull off the existing um, 0603 component or just add one onto the feedback resistor so it reduces the gain. You would have to cover these things up substantially more to get rid of the ambient sound. Um, or you could go with something entirely different. There were other suggestions. Uh, Nick, Poole, and a couple other guys were like, hey, you should check out the, the piezo sensors. Uh, I did. Uh, I checked them out uh, I, I, on our website, and uh, the bandwidth is not even close to what it needs to be to do this correctly. Um, not only that, I think they're more flexi sensors, and they're like 90 volts output or something. It's like a static discharge, blah, blah, blah. blah. But one thing that I thought about, and I ran this by Nick just because he was standing around, um, was uh, the uh, surface trans? We, we have a couple of surface transducers, right? And the idea behind this is that you hook in uh, an audio signal and then you mount this transducer onto a solid object and then the solid object becomes a speaker. Aha! Well, I'm not looking for a speaker, but a speaker can work backwards as a microphone too. I, I, I actually brought one home and I tested it and between this morning trying to set this video up and now, I've lost it. I don't know where it is. So I've got the SKU number for you so you can see which one I'm talking about. Uh, com, C-O-M, C-O-M, dash 10917, okay? It's got a bandwidth of 300 hertz to 19 kilohertz. That's plenty. Low E is like three something, so it'll get that. Um, and I hooked it up, I wired it up to my oscilloscope and the output of this thing, I, I mounted it on uh, this guitar on a little piece of sticky tape that I stuck, I don't know, somewhere here. Um, hit a string and it comes out with about mm, 20 millivolts peak to peak. Um, so it looks workable. I think I could probably, uh, you know, set that up with like uh, a b -b 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 instrumentation amplifier, like a differential uh, op amp. Um, and get some decent sound out of that. It's got the bandwidth, it's not gonna have feedback, nearly what it is with these. Um, and so for the next time, for the next time, I think that's what I'm going to do. So this is still going to get uh, LEDs in some capacity at some point. Uh, now worth a mention is that we have to do the next video a week earlier than we would normally do so. So I'm going to have to bust my hump. My wife loves when I say that. Uh, I'm going to have to work really hard this weekend to try and get all this stuff wrapped up so that I have something to present for next time. Not going to be light. Might be a little light. But I think what I'm going to do is mount a couple of those uh, service transducers on here and see if I can get better sound. And I think I'm going to be successful because um, I feel lucky. And because this was so bad, I can't possibly do worse. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. Sometime in the upcoming episodes, I would really like to cover something like serial communication, like UARTs, SPI, I2C, 
Um, it's something we probably should have talked about. Analog is closer to my heart, but digital processing is something you just gotta do. And this isn't really digital processing, this is digital communication. And anytime you have a microcontroller, you're gonna have to deal with something like this. It's not gonna happen next time, but it might happen in the next few. But for the next time, we're gonna do what I said, which is with the service transducers on the guitar, and I'll see you get some lighting, blah, 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 and like that. If you have questions that you would like addressed, you send them to feedback at sparkfun.com with according to Pete in the subject line. Other than that, keep the comments coming in the section below. Say, Pete, your shirt rocks. Um, Pete, your shorts are awesome. Pete, your hat is on backwards or sideways. And until next time, I'll see ya.